Hello everybody, today I'm going to demonstrate a couple of Esri features and there are going to be two specific pieces inside the service portal, but I'm also going to give you an example towards the end of how we use this in public sector digital services. When you upload the application, and I'm going to show you how to do that, once you go to get help in your service portal, as long as you still have that menu, you're going to see two examples, the Esri JS API test and the Esri leaflet test. These are two catalog items that I'm using to demonstrate the Esri capabilities. As you click on these maps, it's going to find your location. This is the leaflet one. And then I can click around and I can pick a different location. And as I pick these different locations, you'll see on the bottom, it fills a bunch of the variables up. If we go back, can we help you? I'm also going to use a second one is on, in our application, and that's the Esri JS API test. So instead of Leaflet, we're using the JavaScript API directly, and this gives you more flexibility if you want to do things like add layers to the maps. So what this one does is it lets you search, just like the other one. I could either use my current location, or I can go ahead and put an address in there if I wanted to. And then I can click around, and it'll pick the clicks. Now you'll see on the bottom here that it does go ahead and fill out all of this data. And we're gonna hide that data later, but I'm just showing it for now for demonstration purposes. But that's basically what these maps do is they let you click around to select an address. And even if I went ahead and had selected a cross street like here, it's gonna give me a range for that cross street. You see it says 28301 to 28499. Even though I'm not giving you the cross streets, you should be able to find that intersection by the address that's selected here. In order to get this, I did create an application and the application is uploaded onto GitHub. And you'll be able to get that. I'm gonna provide a link to this GitHub repo down below in the notes in the video. We're gonna use this repo later to upload the data into your instance. I'm not gonna spend any time today demonstrating how to integrate with GitHub, but I did create a video and I'll also put a link to this video that shows you how to import an application from GitHub into ServiceNow. After watching this six minute video, you should be able to pretty easily come here and upload this repository. Once you have this repository uploaded, you're gonna have this inside of your instance. So you'll get those two catalog items that I showed you, and they should be in your directory in the Get Help directory of your service portal. A couple of the other things we'll have in here are the actual widgets. If I want to see the widget for the JavaScript API, I can click on that and you can see the code that I wrote here for the ArcGIS JavaScript API. You can even do a little preview if you hit the eye here and see what it's doing. As I click on the map, it'll show you the features just like it does. It'll zoom in, it'll center it, and it'll give you that address location. This is not in a catalog item, so you're not going to see those forms populating there, but it is populating the forms underneath when you are using it inside of a catalog item or a record producer. I started the map up here and it's all using the JavaScript API library, so you don't need anything special. What you will need is a key. I'm not using ArcGIS, but you do need to upload this Esri key. Now in order for the Esri key, there's one in there now and mine may work for a while, but uh, this is a demo key, so I'll probably kill this key and it might not be available when you're trying this out yourself. In order to get a key, what you'll need to do is go to developers.arcgis.com and I'll provide a link to this in the YouTube video as well. So you should have three links in the video. You'll have one link will be the GitHub repository. The other link will be the YouTube video explaining how to upload the app into your instance. And then the third link will be a link to developer.arcgis.com where you can sign up for an account and get a key. Now the key that you'll get here will be a, a basic key for, for developers, but that key will get you enough so you can demonstrate everything that is inside of our application. The other parts of this, as we go through the code, we can see a couple, I'll call out a couple other features just so you know what they are. So I'm looking at the JavaScript API. We create the map. In here, I move the zoom to the bottom right so that you can click on the bottom right. A lot of people like the controls there better, but if you don't, you can move them, move them somewhere else. I added a search block. So that's this little feature up here for search. And then with search, what I can do is I can go ahead and, and type it in. And then the other thing that I'm doing is I have a click handler. So there's a layer on here that I can click on the map and that's this one. 
as I click, it's giving me that new address. Once I click on something or I choose a search result, I'm going to do this set mark call. What set mark is doing is one, it's creating that pop up that you see. I create a open pop up and in the title, I'm putting the response, the long label. Then I go to, I'm centering it and I'm zooming to 18. And then the last thing I do when somebody clicks on a result or searches on a result is I'm going to upload all of these form variables. And that's that little demonstration we saw in the beginning where I was clicking on things and you saw the variables being populated underneath. That's where this gets loaded into your actual variables in your record producer or your catalog item. The other one's not too much different. It's a little bit of a different code base, but if you go into the, the other one for Leaflet, you'll see that Leaflet is very similar code, but it does a few different things. Uh, so the leaflet code, if you wanted to use that, you can use that. And again, you could have it open here and you could try leaflet out just like I was with the JavaScript API. So enough about the code. There's plenty to play with in there if you want to change the base maps. I even included a different base map in there for you if you wanted to just change it and see what that looks like. There's some other things you can do with the size of the map. You could even add an overlay on here. So a couple people said, if I'm reporting a problem with a streetlight, I want a streetlight overlay so they could pick the actual streetlight. And you can do that in here because with the JavaScript API, you can easily add layers that you've already created on top of this map and make the streetlights the clickable feature instead of this one that just lets you pick a general location. So those are the two widgets that are there. The way these widgets work is you embed them inside, and I embedded them inside of a variable set have this JavaScript API variable set, and this is going to be very similar to the other variable set for the leaflet. And in the variable set, you'll see I have U latitude, U longitude. The reason that I'm doing these is because if you make them the same name as the field on the record that we're producing, it'll copy those right into the field. Right? So if I have a case that I'm creating inside of a public sector case record, it'll actually map these fields right in. So you don't have to do any cross mapping to say map U latitude to the U latitude field in the public sector case table. And I'm going to show you an example of how these work, but it's critical that these names are the same as the names inside the table. One last thing, I, I do have these catalog UI policies. And what that does is if you're to a point where you just want to hide all those fields, I'm comfortable with what I'm clicking on and I don't need to see them every time, you just go ahead and activate this and it'll get rid of the fields. And we'll take a look at that at the end too. I'm gonna to demonstrate this Esri JavaScript API in our public sector digital services portal. I created a table called service requests. And in the service requests table, I added a couple fields. So I added street, a city, a region, a zip code, a latitude, and a longitude. I added all of those fields into the table so when I ha get a new service request, I can get those fields directly populated. I wanted to find a new record producer. I'm gonna call this report a pothole, just for an easy example that everybody can associate with, report pothole. I wanna have report a pothole come up in our government services portal. Right, so I wanna go down here and I wanna make sure that I can put it inside that portal. Catalogs, and I'm gonna go edit, and I'm gonna put it inside of our government portal. Government service portal. I could have just put it in, my, my defaults are in the service portal because I know everybody has those, but I wanna create one in a different portal just so you can see how easy this is to use once you upload the application. I'm gonna put it in a certain category too. So I wanna make sure inside of my government services, I'm putting it under constituent services. The only thing I have to do besides putting that very basic record producer together, I have to add a variable set. And the variable set I'm going to add is the variable set that I created inside of my custom application. And in the variable sets, I'm going to edit. One I'm going to add here is going to be Esri JS API variable set. And I'm going to save that. Now what I should be able to do is I should be able to go into my constituent services under my government services portal. I should be able to see in there that I have a new request called report pothole that we just created. 
When I click on report pothole, because I brought that variable set over, I get a bunch of different things. One, I'll get the widget on the top that I was showing you earlier. And two, I'll get all of the variables without putting those in. I'll get all the variables underneath so that when I click on something, whether it's my current location or I click on another location, it's going to populate all this data. Right? When I go ahead and submit it, a service request number that put that into the new table. If I go in now and look under constituent service request, that's where I created my service request table, the one that I was showing you earlier. Now I should see one in there. That's the 007, which is the, the one that we just created. And then underneath 007, you'll see that it brought over my street, my city, my region, my zip. And the reason it brought all those over is because in that service request, right, in that extended table, the SNGM service request table, I put those fields on there. So there's a U underscore street, a U underscore city, just the same variables that we had in our variable set. So as long as you consistently name these, you can go ahead and use those so you can get that address on your records pretty easily. I'm not going to want to see all those fields, right? The, the main reason for having a map on here is because we don't want the constituents to have to type all this stuff in. And we don't want them to look at all this data. So the only thing you'll have to do to make sure that happens, because I'm using my JavaScript API widget here, is I'll go back into that variable set for the Esri JS API. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the UI policy from the variable set and I'm going to make that active. Now, when I go ahead and make that active, what it's going to do, it's going to hide all of those fields. So when the user's clicking on the map, they won't see the fields anymore. So if I go back here and I refresh this catalog item, and all those fields are gone. All I want them to do is tell me where the issue is and describe the issue. And all they're going to do is pick where the pothole is. The pothole is right about there. So I can click on it and even put it exactly on the location so I get the exact lat long of the pot and I can go ahead and submit that case. So without seeing any of the fields, because I hid them with that catalog UI policy, I can go back here into my service requests and I should still see in number eight that I have all that data on where I put that new record. So I have the data without seeing the fields and that's really the outcome that we want on any of these tickets, whether they're clicking on a general location like I'm doing now or if they're actually clicking on things like a street light or uh, a bridge, any things that you want to, any features you want to add to that app, you'd be able to do that. There's one other feature here that I just want to discuss quickly, and I did not do the feature. But inside of your record producers, there's an area for a script. Now, sometimes you may want to create a location. Instead of putting all of those things on your record, you might want to take all of the variables and create a location. So pretty easily here, I could add a script that would take my lat, my long, my address that I got from the API. It would take all of those variables and it could actually build a location object and add that new location object to the record. Think about those types of options instead of just using what's here by default. But this is the easy way to get started is we will be able to attach it to a record. When you create it, we'll be able to attach all those fields to the record so you can go ahead and use those fields and not have to worry too much about the constituents, in this case, filling in the, the address, the street, the city, the zip code. You don't want all that filled in by people manually. So this helps you normalize the address and it helps you get real addresses that are easily locatable because you have that core lat long, which will get you to the exact spot that they're reporting. Hopefully this is helpful and you can use these widgets in your own portals. Thank you very much.